Thank you for that understanding. Um, I thought I need to point out that uh, in addition to the three things, You have also the freedom of thought and 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 I listen, although you call it a district, district Nairobi, Kajiado, and uh, and up to Nyeri, uh, bigger than counties. <laughs> so we are very honoured to have been asked to join with you, um, man of God, uh, Zerubbabel, very strong uh, prophetic messenger of God, we thought you could come and just join with you uh, and, and eat the cake together with the children, one year of this congregation. So I think we need to clap for you and give you all the encouragement. Beyond that, uh, we have to recognize that we are living in a country that is democratic and a country that has recognized under our Constitution 2010 the supremacy of God in the lives of this nation, in the lives of all Kenya. Um, that's why it's so clear that under our Constitution 2010 uh, that this is a nation under God. And so also being a democratic, multi-party democracy, expressly recognized under our constitution as well. Therefore, Bishop and Pastor, you will give us on our first encounter with you, we tell you about some of these truths that are in our constitution. The freedom of expression, the freedom of worship, and uh, and I'm quite sure that is why you're here. But as you can continue to enjoy this free, uh, freedom, you have also the freedom of thought and particularly political expression. I belong to a school of thought that does not look at some person politicians. They are leaders, especially poor, by going to some in a particular manner. Because the ordinary perception of politicians is somebody who lies or somebody who is very with, uh, with facts and truth. And so, the moment I believe for Africa is now. And it is here. Yeah. For, for us to have had this French aspect of it is, is very encouraging. We have to respond because we are leaders. And, and I liked it very much. I was coming on the road and as a pastor prayed, and I think we will hear so much commanded in the, in the book of Romans to pray for those in leadership positions. Some people just believe that you just pray for the president and the deputy president. He actually prayed for them by name. But when the next command said, you also pray for the leaders in your position. Because that is the totality of the Kenyan rea reality and our constitution 25. Therefore, when we meet like this and there are things that are common, allow us to mention, and I'm so honored that you first have thought I could pray at the end of this session, because I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Therefore, the Church of the Nazarene is, is very, um, very eloquently expressed in my own mind, because the totality of God, you believe in the Holy Spirit, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I've looked at that, at all of that, and I'm so encouraged that I'm exactly like I would have been at the Baptist Church this morning, or in any other Pentecostal assembly. Because remember, there was a major also, and then became the Pente Pentecostal assemblies of the Church of Nazarene. So, President William Ruto flew into the country yesterday, very concerned, while he was away in the United States of America, 
a lot of strange things were happening. Yesterday, my colleagues and I were able to visit Kamukunji, the Komba market, saw the destruction of people's livelihoods. They do not have children suffering from pneumonia because after the, the, the flash flood and then the demolition, the demolitions that have happened, there's a lot of suffering going on. And I want to ask that we pray for the suffering Kenyans who do not know even how to put food, uh, place some chakula on the table for their children. And uh, Kenyans are concerned about, for example, the high cost of travel. I was vi once vice president under President Kibaki. And in fact, one of the clips that is going around is showing me receiving President Kibaki at, the international, at Moy International Airport. He had just arrived from New York to attend the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, I want to challenge uh, President Ruto because he has just said that in a very democratic manner, because that's where we are, he has just said that uh, the 200 million shillings that uh, the State House Controller or Minister of Foreign Affairs paid to this uh, royal company uh, from Dubai to Washington is actually cheaper <laughs> than flying 10 years. Uh, th that has just come through while we are here and really celebrating with you one year of this congregation. We have also to now really come out as a nation and, and, and pitch for truth, even in terms of uh, um, um, top leadership of this country. And, and the good thing is President Ruto is saying uh, because he's a people's servant and he wants to express, uh, you know, kind of live transparently, it would be very good if that can be published, how much it costs to fly Kenya Airways, because a regular flight from Nairobi to New York <laughs> by KQ. And if one was to fly a uh, first class, and you know, by the way, they do configuration for heads of state, and you fly directly, uh, first class or configured. It is not like uh, well, when Francis Atoli was saying the President of the Republic would be ro rubbing shoulders with the uh, people wanting to use the toilet facilities, for example. When you are flying ahead of state, it is quite different. Uh, you've done these things before. It would be very interesting for Kenyans to know how much it would have cost, right, to fly the president by KQ from Jomo Kenyatta to New York, or even indeed to Washington, on a regular flight. Because that's what President Kibaki used to do. I remember also meeting President Kappa. They fly uh, from Tanzania to catch a flight across to uh, Europe and catch uh, the Emirates flight, regular flight, or catch a BA flight. These are normal ways of travel. And what President Uhuru, for example, will do with the Fokker friendship, which was procured by President Moy when he was there, very effective still, fly from Nairobi to Dubai, and then fly the regular, um, regular flights, long-haul flights of Emirates or Qatar or whatever from Doha into Washington, wi Washington Dallas, for example, that's the international airport in Washington, or fly into New York. So these are some of the things that we, we expect leaders to speak openly and be truthful about these things. And then do, let Kenyans then judge which is cheaper. But it is good that uh, uh, President Ruto has responded to that concern by Kenyans. And because he has, then let all the facts be laid bare so that the truth will be uh, known to Kenyans. You know, we misinterpret the Bible sometimes when and leaders say, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You know, it was Jesus Christ himself who said that. He is the truth. So not this other truth by Tina Kalonzo and Eugene and Keone, <laughs> okay? Uh, 
But truth is also important, it finds universal expression. The other thing is that we want to thank um, the church for standing again at this time. And, and if you are in a country that is democratic, a country that regards and respects every other citizen as equal equality before the law, it is important that we also recognize the church in Kenya. The church in Kenya. We're beginning to hear the church again speaking. We had a bishop, uh, Olesa Pitt, when he was uh, in North Baringo, for example, challenging the president to say, before you send our young men, I don't know how many women will be going there, a young men to Haiti, and then be seen like an occupation force by that Caribbean country, why don't you deal with the insecurity in North Baringo first? That was a way as a church. That's a way Ole Sapit looked at it as Bishop Ole Sapit. We need to tell Kenyans the truth. Even when I was here, I tried to check again with the president of the Law Society of Kenya. And the fact of this thing is, again, a country under the rule of law will not want to do things unconstitutional. Judge Justice Chacha made a ruling in May to say that the matter of taking Kenyan uh, young soldiers, police officers, to Haiti would be unconstitutional. And there were things that were supposed to have happened. But this matter was taken to court by what they call themselves the Third Way Alliance, another political democratic formation. And the matter is, an, is actually alive in court. The ruling by Justice Chacha is alive. In fact, Okuro, Okuro, I think, of court and his team have now wanted to have President Ruto cited for contempt of court and C.S. Kendiki cited for, for court because they insist on sending these young men to Haiti when there's a court ruling saying, well, you know, first of all, there must be a bilateral arrangement with an authority in Haiti able to sign because there's a prime minister who flew in here. He never flew back. <laughs> uh, and that's when some documents were signed. There must be an authority able to sign bilateral agreements. That was the ruling of a court. Uh, so, Mambuhaya ni magumu, but thank you. Thank you for inviting us so we can share. Because these are things, when, when we walk out of here, uh, we cannot pretend we do not have these things affecting us, Bishop. So that's why we are sharing them with you, because we are the other side of government in this country. The opposition under Constitution 2010 is the other side of government. It's actually the government in waiting. So if we don't tell Kenyans this truth, we'll be failing in our duty. Man of God, we thank you that you invited us to come. And we want, therefore, to take the opportunity of this, op this opportunity to say leaders must not take things for granted. There are other deeper issues that have come out of this visit by President Ruto to the United States, which will need a serious conversation. For example, our foreign policy orientation. Madame, uh, the secretary of this church, I don't know whether she's still in the house, uh, she said that she only hears to hear of the Minister for Foreign Affairs. He's now right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> former Vice President, former, former Minister for Foreign Affairs. In fact, had BBI gone through, because this is the other issue, which is also coming out, Kenyans were pushed to throw out a very important reform program, the Building Bridges in Initiative. And as town, we are not going to be talking about uh, secretary, secretaries when we mean ministers. It was proposed that we go back to ministers, like Mushmo Eugene was minister for defense. I was minister for foreign affairs. We cannot, 
really take everything from America and then pretend we are a colony of, of, of America. We are not. We are not one of the 52 states of the United States of America. A great people live out there. And we would want and of course want to cooperate and, and, and work with them. But Kenyans would want to know the security implications of being designated as a non-NATO ally. What does that mean, the security implications? Because we're in a very volatile region, populated by al-Shabaab and other places. We took the bullet in 1998 as a country. We took a bullet. Remember when the United States Embassy was bombed here in Nairobi and simultaneously in Dar es Salaam, the biggest damage was here. I think, in fact, if uh, President William Ruto had taken uh, Senator Agnes Kavindu, Senator for Machakos, because she had brought a very important matter of Kenyans who lost their lives. There are a lot of them still who cannot see properly because of that bomb blast, and they would have expected some measure or compensation. They still are there talking about it. This matter, in fact, would have been very well handled if it was brought before uh, President uh, Joe Biden, who was playing host to, place the, to President Ruto. So we want to invite uh, our scholars and foreign policy uh, practitioners to debunk this matter. Uh, President William Ruto made me laugh when he was asked by Richard Quest of the CNN <laughs> uh, whether Kenya is looking east <laughs> or looking west. He said, we are not looking either way. We are looking forward. <laughs> <laughs> that was very interesting coming from. So he himself needs a bit of orientation on some of these things. This is an independent republic. And because of our geographical location, where we are, at the Horn of Africa, with all these challenges, we need to be absolutely careful about what we do so that the Kenyan people will remain safe under foreign policy that is reliably tested over time because we are friends. We are friends with the United States of America, for sure. The first airlift of Kenyans, the late Tom Joseph Boyer and Robert Kennedy, those were the people who, because we were just become a fresh, a newly independent state, and we didn't have even the knowledge to run a whole nation. That's why the Robert Kennedys and, and, and Tom Boyer organized the first famous airlift of Kenyans in order to capacity build for a new Kenya that time. But time, time. Time has brought about a situation where this is a very solid country. Uh, we pray for Ethiopia, we pray for Uganda, we pray for Somalia, Somalia in particular, South Sudan. We continue to help our people, our friends in South Sudan. Pray for South Sudan. Pray for Somalia. Ethiopia is in some kind of a turmoil. Therefore, we can understand when the Americans have looked at Kenya and said, let us elevate this country's status to be able to work for regional peace and security. But it cannot happen at the expense of who we are, an independent republic. So I only meongea kwa urefu kidogo because and those are some of the things we used to do. Kwa hivyo, we came with my colleagues today uh, if you want us, I think we'll come back again. We like the infrastructure here. And uh, uh, we'll keep on coming to pray and worship with you. And maybe, maybe you may have to go up <laughs> in the years ahead. Because this, as I said, I'm not a prophet, but as I said, I'm just a follower of Jesus Christ. 
saved by his grace. And thank you for the opportunity to partake uh, in the Lord's table. That was very, very unique, and we really appreciate it. That's why we have to say it so that uh, we all walk out of here feeling renewed spiritually. So on, on that note, maybe I can ask my friends to say something, and then I will say, uh, I, I will say the final prayer as I requested, and then at the end of it, we say the words of the grace together. Mishma Yudjin. Praise the Lord. So much French, but uh, I, I'll, I'll try to learn. Bonjour. Louise Le Seigneur. Ah, Sante Sante. Je m'appelle Eugene. Merci beaucoup. I want to say uh, merci beaucoup to thank you in a very special way for having us in your church. I must con <laughs> confess I'd never heard of this church. I heard of it from uh, my friend, Dr. Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, and he told me he'd been invited to the Central Nazarene Church. And I said I would accompany him here today and I've seen something very, very unique in this church, the way you have welcomed us. Secondly, they would say it is also for Catholics who have been prepared. So even among Catholics present, not all we receive. If the previous night you had been somewhere, maybe drinking and doing some ungodly things, and you have not been properly prepared, you are not allowed to receive the Holy Communion, <laughs> even if you are a Catholic. So there are such restrictions. But when we came here, you welcomed us as if we are part of your fellowship. We say thank you very, very much. And we are also happy that you are celebrating your anniversary. We also want to thank you for sharing the cake with us and to say that from now going forward, you will know that you have friends in us and we will continue being part of this church and part of this fellowship. So we thank you also, Bishop, for the wonderful word from uh, Daniel, uh, uh, chapter 3. And as we're sitting there with uh, my three colleagues when we came in, I was saying uh, that I think there was a very special message to us. When we walked in, the three of us, we were just strangers, but now we've become part of this family. But the courage of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego to defend their faith, to defend their Christian values unto death is something that we as Christians need to emulate, need to stand for, and be true Christians by word and by deed. I say so because politicians, sometimes, though we are Christians, we are not true Christians. When it comes for, uh, uh, when it comes that time when we need the vote, we go to your churches. We ask for your support. And we pledge to do everything that you would want us to do. But today, when the church is speaking to us, speaking to authority, to the leadership of this country, and they are saying, as Archbishop Olesefit said, do not send our children 12,000 kilometers away to put them in harm's way. We do not want to listen to the church. But when we needed their vote, we came we pray, we knelt, and you listen to us. So today we want to tell uh, Dr. William Ruto that you went to Washington, you have come back home, you have done what you did, 
but you have gone against the wishes of many Kenyans, including the church in the Republic of Kenya. You have also gone against our courts, because when you're going to profess how you are a Democrat, you believe in the rule of law, and yet back home there is a court ruling that has said what you intend to do to send Kenyans to Haiti is unconstitutional, it's illegal. You are defying your own court and defying the supreme law of the land, which is your constitution. Yet you want to still play to the gallery and say you are a Democrat who believes in the rule of law. This is hypocrisy, and we must call him out for that. So as as Mio, we want to stand by the ruling of the court. We want to stand with the law society of Kenya. We want to stand with the church in telling this government that what they are doing in sending our children to Haiti is unconstitutional, it is illegal, and we stand opposed to it. But also when the time comes, when Haiti turns to Maiti, and those children come home in body bags, we will hold you, William Ruto, responsible for those children. That is what we want to leave here today. We have also come here to thank the church for standing with the people of Kenya. When this government kept raising taxes in 2023 and now in the finance bill 2024, the church has also been on the front line in saying no to these high taxes, the punitive taxes of the Kenya Kwanza government. Again, the same government has defied the church. We have had the Catholic bishop speak, uh, Archbishop Olesha Peter, and all religious leaders, including Muslim leaders. They have spoken about the need to lower taxes. But what have we been told? That we are just getting started. That is what William Ruto told Kenyans, Mutalipa Ushuru, Mupende, Mutipende. And we are going to raise these taxes, Mupende, Mutipende. The trajectory is that taxes will keep going up as long as William Ruto is president of the Republic of Kenya. And that is why as the opposition, as the government in waiting, we want to tell Kenyans today, if you wish one day to see a government that will listen to you, that will lower taxes, that will fight corruption, that will do what they say. We have that government in waiting today with you here in the Nazarene Church. Pray for us. Thank you and God bless you. May I, uh, th th there's a colleague of mine uh, who is the Secretary General of uh, the Jubilee Party and we are just concerned. And Mwishmiwa Kalonzo has said here that as leaders we owe Kenyans the truth. We want to challenge him today that a Haiti. The church has been very firm on the LGBTQ issue. We want William Ruto to tell Kenyans what was discussed, what was agreed, and if there were any monies given with strings attached on the LGBTQ agenda. That we want to ask him to do. Jeremiah Joe Wonge in our sister house. I am I'm looking at the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 31, 1 to 9, but I, you can look at verses, nine, verses 8 and 9. And it reads, Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly, defend the rights of the poor and the needy. And I want to uh, thank our leader, the former Vice President of the Republic of Kenya, Mwishimua Karonzo Musioka, for inviting us to, to accompany him to this church. I was last here in this church 25 years ago. And I remember I stood here, we were doing some Bible study on uh, the BSF. We were doing it here some 25 years ago. So unlike Kwamarwa, I have been around a while, for a while. 
But I, I think it is important to point out, as my colleagues have said, and I associate myself with all, all they have said, that we are now at a time when we have to get the church to speak on behalf of the voiceless. If the church does not speak, the voiceless in this country are going to really get into a lot of difficulties, one disaster into another. It is true that uh, um, Dr. William Samoe Ruto has said that uh, the 200 million shillings that it costed him to hire the, the jet. And remember, there was a heap of other people in the other flight. It's not that they were all in one plane. So we are only talking about those who are in the loyal uh, jet. And it costed us uh, 200 million shillings. And we still have not been told how much it costed us because the plane waited for him for all the time that he was in the U.S. on that side. If they knew he was not charged for the flight, um, uh, for the plane when it was not still at the, at the, at the airport, the pilot and everybody else who was there waiting for him, that cost must have come to the uh, taxpayers also. So it's necessary to know what is this cost. What is the, the figure? Because we have seen other presidents before. Uh, Mr. Kanonzo has said, or Marwa has uh, also said, they were traveling before and they have gone for all these trips before to the U.S. And they have used commercial uh, freight. And certainly they were cheaper than um, uh, what you'd want us to, to believe. And I think it is also important that uh, Dr. Tari Samoy William Ruto, Aaron Haishima Kawakele, Rob Pia, you can always find out what he is telling us. When he, he lies to the whole country that uh, it was cheaper to take a jet uh, as opposed to taking a commercial flight, I really, Tasigini Nasia Kama Heshima Kwetu, Hamna Nasia Mtuja Mzuri. Mzuri kuwa na Heshima, hasa kwa wale wale kupatia kazi, na pia wale ambao wana kutegemea uweze kuwa saidia. And I talk about the voice of the voiceless because. Yesterday, uh, Mr. Kanozo has mentioned, we went to Yukomba, we went to uh, Kamukuji and all those areas. And it is important th that the church also visit those people. The demolitions that are being done, and they are being done so that we can again impress the Mzungus that we are conscious of climate change without any feeling for the poor, is very disheartening. It's really, really disheartening. It was really sad to see those poor people, no covering on their head. One there told me that I have been here since 1971, and he was now out into the open, not knowing where to go next. And they are being told, you need to be 30 meters away from the river. Yes, 30 meters away from the river. But if Museum Hill, the expressway, is it 30 meters away from the river? The expressway is on, on the same river. Kiromo Campus, part of it is on the same river. Nairobi University is also on the same river. And uh, many of the high-class residential areas are within the 30 meters. So it is not genuine, it's yet another lie that is being told to Kenya. When they are being evicted from that area, they, are, they have a design or they have a purpose or they have a reason as to why they are moving them from that river. And I think they are interested in the run. It is the church again, the voice of the church needs to be heard, even uh, in those uh, times. Floods have come. Today we still have people, uh, families that uh, my mahio, they have still not recovered. They don't even know. They don't know where the bodies of their loved ones are. The government has not come in full to help. Yet we are out there uh, saying many things. And that is why I think it is important that we pay attention to that. Remember also, even as we talk about the finance bill, and as we talk about the 200 million shillings that was spent to fly, and again, even as we go, uh, but you go with your immediate family, you go with your extended family, you go with all your in-laws, 
and then you go and parade them uko nje hii tena hii kitu iko na heshima kwa wakenya naenda kutuletea hii bingine dogo dogo ambayo haitakikani iletwe na mtu ambaye amekaa kwa ofisi eh, kubwa namna hiyo you pay 200 million shillings to fly out and you scrap school feeding program unatoa chakula kwa watoto hawa ambao hawana hata wazazi wengine wengine ni wasigo parents na unatumia zile pesa kupanda ndege you need this for it of the forces inua jamii program also gone leader mama program cut money that was going to the orphans to the persons living with disability is also gone yet we can take the 200 million yet with our whole family and extended family and relatives of the extended family members going to parade them out here i think it is like something that we need uh, to really uh, think hard about I know uh, I think I am it, when I was seated there and I had uh, your excellency speak about this it also hit me that uh, daktari Samuel William Ruto does not sleep in state house anarara wapi Lazima anarara pale who is paying for that how much money are we paying in lieu of him sleeping in state house if he, he used to have the million to hire a chopper or uh, to, to hire the jet how much money are we paying for his house as rent because anarara kwa nyumba yake na ni sisi tunalipia rent we need to find out that there could be another 200 million shillings a scandal or disaster that is there and i as i finish one of the other things that uh, we are told um, he managed to get we are reading from the papers i'm sure we'll get the details later is that he was uh, given some money to come and undertake IEBC reforms if we do not know a disaster in the making that's another disaster dr samuel dr william luto are taking iebc reforms with 198 million shillings tafakari haya lakini pia when we give ourselves the 2010 constitution one of the things we agreed is that we will not get foreigners funding our electoral process he's already gone outside those uh, understandings and they are going to give us equipment when they give us equipment the outcome will be what they desire not what we desire as kenyans we need to be very careful at this early uh, point in, in time na ni vizuri tuseme ya kwamba hawezi ongeza bei ya mkate hawezi ongeza bei ya mkate na huyo unafikiria mambo ya wakenya ana wa colleagues members of parliament who are there i'm happy we have some loyal ones who have been loyal to azimio here those who left us and went to sell, sell our souls to uda they need to know that they sold the souls of these young ones who would have depended on them at time like now when we need that voice of the voiceless i thank you for giving us an opportunity to come before you and for us to be able to fellowship with you and even to share the holy communion with you i am a follower of christ and that is a special moment that we had with this church god bless you all thank you doubt because the media is here and the interest of full disclosure information A declaration is hereby issued by sections 107, 108 and 109 of the National Police Act which provide for deployment of police officers outside the country and a reciprocal arrangement um, to reciprocating countries are unconstitutional and are constitutionally valid. Number two, a declaration is thereby issued. The National Security Council has no mandate to deploy police officers outside Kenya. Article 240, 240 sub Article 8 of the Constitution or any other law. 
Number three, a declaration is hereby issued that any decision by any state organ or state officer to deploy police officers to a hiti and, or, uh, and any other action or step taken by state organ or state officer in furtherance of such decision contravenes the Constitution and the law and is therefore unconstitutional, illegal, and invalid. An order is hereby issued prohibiting deployment of police officers to Haiti or any other country otherwise than, otherwise than in compliance with part um, 14, section 107 and 108 of the Na National Police Service Act. This was done uh, on the 26th of March, 2024. It has not been vacated. And until it is vacated, the matter of deploying our officers remains illegal and unconstitutional. This is why nobody is above the law and they can be cited for contempt of court. Ms. Noah Dan Maanzo, Senator, one minute, and Ms. Noah um, Jessica Masalimia to congregation. And then I'll actually now, the rest of them will be very brief, Pastor. So that I can pray. Thank you. Uh, tulikuwa tuna shiriki kwa maombi kule kanisani. Ya, ya, ya pale kwa mbunge. Sasa ni sema ya kwamba leo nimefurahishwa na maombiri na sana sana. When you say that uh, uh, it is important for leaders to stand for God. Shandrach, Abednego and Meshach stood for God. And I think that's what leaders should do. What I'm encouraging the National Assembly against this proposed finance bill, which want to make lives of Kenyans harder, is that uh, they stand like uh, those three and reject this bill, which is going to make Kenyans suffer very much. And the other point is that uh, on the Haiti issue, the people of Haiti have demonstrated against the government of Kenya. And they have said that uh, Haiti is not for sale. Now, as uh, Honorable Eugene Wamara says, when a Haiti turns to Mahiti, who is going to compensate these Kenyans who have gone to a country which is Creole speaking and none of these people know Creole? So, that's a question we, we need answered by the current government and do it so against court order and against the Constitution. Thank you. I think that is very serious and I really want to thank you today for inviting us thank to you. fellowship with you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Jessica is coming. Thank you, the bishop, the clergy, members of the church, my leaders of Azimio. Na sisi zote wame tumekuja kanisa kuomba. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe tena. My name is Jessica Mbalo, member of parliament, Kibwezi's constituents. I came a bit late, but I was coming to pray in church. We are here in church to pray. We always come to church to pray. To pray for people to get food, not expensive food. We come here to pray for a country not to be corrupted, not to have officials who are corrupt. And I think that's why we are all here. I want to say, as the Book of Daniel, as a member of parliament for 10 years now, we will not vote for that finance bill that is affecting Kenyans. Unless the church tells me to go and vote. Do I vote or I don't vote? <laughs> Thank you. I don't vote. Thank, Thank you. you. Public Thank participation you. church. Thank you so much. I uh, have to get us pray. As we pray, remember our country, Remember the conversations we have had. Uh, and we thank you for this privilege. Um, so let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you. Because your word says where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in their midst. And we thank you because you have been with us. We want to bless your name. We worship you and join with many others gathered in various parts of this country 
and elsewhere in the world, remembering that you are God Almighty, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, the father of your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Redeemer. So we want to ask that you may indeed uh, bless our country. We want to pray, gracious Lord, that you take us through some of these recent challenges, some associated with global climate change. We want to ask my Father that you will be come through for so many of the families who are affected. Men and women will think of you, and children who do not have food even at the table, and parents are unable to provide for them. Would you, would you come through for them? Will you, my Father, be with this congregation, gathered in your name, that you may continue to prosper the work that is ahead of them. So we thank you for the privilege of even praying together. And we bless your name, for it is in Jesus' holy name that we pray with thanksgiving. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.